Big Town. Extra, extra hero about the deadly doll. Tonight's Big Town story, Extra, extra. Big Town. The headline stories of a great city dramatically reported by Steve Wilson. Fighting managing editor, who's freed as with all great newsmen, is emblazoned on the masthead of the Illustrated Press. The power and the freedom of the press is a flaming sword, but it may be a faithful servant of all the people. Use it justly, hold it high, guard it well. Now, Big Town and Steve Wilson's headline story of The Deadly Doll. Most criminals pay for their crimes one way or another. Some pay in prison stretches, five, ten, and twenty-year installments. For others, the final payment is death. And such is the background of tonight's timely saga of crime and criminals, which began in Steve Wilson's office at the Illustrated Press. Hi, Steve. Come in, Laura, my lovely. And close the door on those infernal teletypes. Sure thing. Did you miss me while I was in Washington, Steve? Miss you. We went crazy trying to convince all the swooning swains of Big Town that you were really out of town, even for three days. Very flattering. Thanks for the exaggeration. Well, there must have been at least one call, I hope, I hope. Ask Fletch, ask Mamie. Hmm, probably bill collectors and salesmen. Yeah, salesmen, all right. What a line. Well, I hear you did all right while I was away. You got the paper out every day. I'm talking about you and the case of the pretty lady you saved from a fate worse than being a newspaper reporter. Oh, I see you've been talking to Inspector Callahan of Homicide. Mm Mm-hmm. And I saw that picture of the lady thanking you kindly. Now, don't go jumping at conclusions. Jump? They were written all over your face with lipstick. She was just grateful. How grateful can a gal get? Uh Uh-oh. Save by the bell. Uh, That's a private wire to your underworld listening post, Steve, but um, maybe you gave her that number to call. Shall I leave the office? No, I'll risk it. Hello, Steve Wilson, Illustrated Press. Hiya, Mr. Wilson. What do you know, Joe? Oh, hello, Joe. What do you know? I got a notion there's something cooking over here at the old Grand Hotel. It's just your dish. Gambling trouble? Yeah, but they ain't playing with cards, and they're playing top stakes for keeps. Murder? Maybe. Better call the police, Joe. Well, it ain't happened yet. The cops would give me plenty, and the management would have my job if it didn't come off. Well, what makes you think it might come to murder, Joe? A guy calling himself John Smith. He's got a jailhouse shuffle, a solitary complexion, and the jitters. Uh-oh. How long has he been a guest of the old grand? A week. I mean, he made no calls and ain't hardly come out of his room. Any visitors? Not until now. And now, Joe? A big blonde with a honey of a shape, all muscle, a hard rock pan. And she didn't act as if she was making no social call. Well, that isn't enough to bother you or the old grand Joe. What else? Well, yesterday, this guy gave me a fat envelope to put into the safe. Money? Could be, though. But it was the writing on the envelope would give me ideas. Okay, Joe, let's have it. On the envelope, it said, To whom it may concern, if I should die. If I should die. Have you checked on Smith and his visitors? Yeah. I took up some ice water and squeezed the knob. But the door's locked, and I didn't hear no conversation. Try the house phone? Yeah. No answer. Well, maybe Smith's jumping his bill, and the girl's helping him down the fire escape with his stuff. Nope. He paid in advance. He ain't got no stuff. And uh, the fire escape is busted. Well, better call the police, Joe, and the fire department inspectors. Look, I'm only the bellhop night clerk and general flunky, Mr. Wilson. Nobody pays any attention to what I say around here, except you. Okay, Joe, your hunch average is pretty good. I'll be over there right away. Say, Miss Kelpine. Uh, it's my turn, Steve. Say what, Harry? It is sure good to have you back in my hack. Ah, <laughs> poetry. Thanks, Harry. I'm glad to hear somebody missed me. Ha, <laughs> sarcasm. Say, boss. Yes, Harry? I think that scallion was meant for you. Yes, I heard it whistle past my burning ears. That uh, sounds like Miss Kilp. I saw that picture of that gorgeous girl thanking you for saving her from a chair wrap. She did. Yes. Can't you keep Steve out of trouble while I'm away, Harry? Miss Kilpine, I'm only a hack driver. I cannot keep Mr. Wilson out of trouble even while you are here. Therefore, how can I keep him out of trouble when you are not here, if you get what I mean? I get it, Harry. And whilst we are on the subject of trouble, uh, how come we are hightailing to the Oak Grand Hotel if it is trouble you are not looking for any part of? Harry, as a reporter, you'd be a rewrite man's idea of a nightmare. 
We're going to investigate one of what do you know Joe's hunches. Now what's that guy got a hunch about this time? A murder, Harry, so don't waste any time. Jack, we are practically there, and if you should need an assist, boss... Thanks, Harry, could be, but park out front and stay near your cab with the flag down. And my monkey wrench handy. Uh, what about me, Steve? I overheard Joe say there was a lovely lady in the case. Won't I cramp your style? I'm beginning to wish I hadn't sent you to Washington, Lorelei. Wait until you've seen my expense account. No hats, absolutely no new hats on the expense account. Oh, no, just a couple of evening gowns for the embassy parties. No, I know. I shouldn't have sent you to Washington. You can't win, boss. You can't hardly ever win an argument with a lady. That's my old grand coming up. Maybe you'll have better luck with what do you know, Joe's hunch. Thanks, Harry. In a gambler's hangout, it won't hurt to have a little luck. Come on, Laraline. I have a premonition that we may have a rendezvous with a lady known as Death. <laughs> Old Grand Hotel. Sorry, madam. Mr. Brown checked out last night, and he didn't leave any Ford in address. But you might try the big house on account of he was not traveling as fast as the cops, which were after him. Hello, Joe. You know anything more? Nah, not a thing, Mr. Wilson. Smith still don't answer the phone. Hi, Joe. Hiya, Miss Gilbert. Hey, you oughtn't to be here. This dump ain't no place for a lady. I'm no lady, Joe. Just a reporter. Any sign of that gal who went up to see her, Mr. Smith, who apparently expects to die? Not a trace. How do you know she went up to see Smith, Joe? She went up without asking nobody, and I followed her. And saw her go into Smith's room. Did he let her in? Yeah, when she showed him a gun she was carrying. A gun? I still think you'd better call the police, Joe. Oh, it gives the joint a bad name, Mr. Wilson. And every time the cops show, half the guests check out, but quick... Besides, I figured there ought to be a story in a for your illustrated press. Thanks. Any idea who Mr. Smith really is? Well, I got a notion he's the guy that turned state's evidence in that shipyard stick-up a couple of years ago. The $50,000 payroll job on the south side? Yeah. He was the plant that case the layout. His pals got the chair for killing the guard. He only got five to ten and ought to be out by now. Uh, what about the girl, Joe? Ever see her before? Nope, Miss Kilburn. She's a big, tough babe. Almost six feet. A lot of gal. I don't remember. All right, Joe. Let's go up. Ah, sorry, I can't leave the switchboard. I'm all alone. The night clerk's out sick. Okay, give me a pass key just in case. Okay, I'll try ringing him again while you're on the way up. What's the room number? 420 on the third floor. Don't ask me why. Here's the pass key. Thanks. It's just to make life complicated, Joe. You better stay here, Lorelei. Oh, no. Now that I'm back, I've got to keep you out of hot water. All right, but I doubt if we'll find any in the grand this time of night. Hey, Joe? Yeah, Mr. Wilson, but look out. You don't open that tap on no hot lead. Third floor, Steve. Yes, and room 420 should be down the hall to the right, Lorna. What are you going to use for an excuse to go barging into the room at this time of night? I don't think there'll be anyone in that room interested in why we came, Lorelei. I don't suppose you'd stay here by the stairs. That's right. Lead the way. All right. But keep back. Hunches can misfire and blow your head off. Yeah. There it is, 420. Are you going to knock and announce that we're a couple of inquiring reporters? No, let's listen a minute. Uh, quiet as a grave. You may have something there. I'm going to knock. Stand to one side in case we get an answer in lead. The same to you. Uh, no answer. You knock like a host detective. That could rouse the dead. Now keep back. I'm going to use the pass key. The lights are on. Careful, Steve. Yeah, somebody's been playing roughhouse. Uh-oh. A broken mirror. Seven years bad luck for somebody. Yes, yeah, so and it looks as if somebody broke every piece of furniture in the room. It must have made a noise, Steve, at the window the other guests in the hotel didn't complain. Well, the guests in this die believe in live and let live, Lorelei. Or die. How's your premonition? Getting stronger. Stay here in the hall until I look around. Oh, there's nobody behind the door. I can see through the crack by the hinges, but be careful, Steve. There's another door over there in the corner. Yes, and I think I'd better see what's behind that door before we take a look at this scramble of Grand Rapids antiques. Keep on being careful, Steve. 
Somebody has torn this place apart, and they may be waiting around. Get over there against the wall, Laura and I, my lovely. I'm going to try this closet door. Oh, one of these days, Steve Wilson, you're going to open just one too many doors. I think I'd better use my handkerchief on the knob of this one in case Smith's six-foot lady visitor put him in here for safekeeping. Or vice versa. Oh, for heaven's sake, why must doors in cheap hotels always squeak? Well... I rather imagine this is Mr. Smith. Was Mr. Smith? Yes, the late Mr. Smith. Can can you make out how he died? He's marked up, but there are no signs of bullet wounds. It looks as if he took quite a beating, Laura and I, then his neck was broken and he was hung up in there. And now? Phone down to, what do you know, Joe? Have him call Inspector Callahan of Homicide. And then? Sure, sure, let him find that woman. Thus, Steve and Lorelei move into a search for a deadly and determined woman killer. And in a moment, we'll return for the exciting developments of The Deadly Doll. Now, back to Big Town and The Deadly Doll. Following a tip on the possibility of a murder in the old Grand Hotel, Steve and Lorelei have found the body of a man in the closet of the room, his neck broken. Now, while Lorelei tries to call What Do You Know Joe on the hotel switchboard... Steve searches the room. Steve, there's something wrong. Joe on the switchboard doesn't answer. Oh, keep trying, Laura and I. Joe's all alone down there on the desk. He may be busy with something else. Oh, but Joe said he'd stick on the switchboard until we called down. I don't like it. Hello? Hello, Joe? Steve, have you found anything in the room that could tell us who Mr. Smith really is? Not a thing. He was traveling light. No extra clothes, no papers to tell us anything. Gee, that's odd. Joe said he'd been here a week. Yes, but never left the hotel. Hardly left this room, Laura. Looks as if he were hiding out. Yes. And the big blonde girl finally caught up with him. She must be really big and strong to have beaten him up like that and finally broken his neck. Yes. And she ripped this room apart looking for something. I have a notion she tried to make him tell her where it was and killed him in the process. Still no answer from Joe? Not a murmur, Steve. I wonder if... Wait a minute, Laura. Huh? Joe told us Smith gave him an envelope to put in the hotel safe. Mark, to whom it may concern if I should die. Exactly. And Smith is dead. And we're in this up to our necks, so it certainly concerns us as well as the police. Well, the police might not look at it that way, Laura and I, but I'm sure Inspector Callahan of Homicide will be sympathetic. Come on. Let's go back downstairs and call him from there. And get what do you know, Joe, to open the safe and let us look at that envelope? Yes, if he has the combination to the safe. Okay, but what about... Mr. Smith. We'll lock the door, but it isn't necessary. Dead men with broken necks don't walk away from the scene of their murder. Let's go. All right, you little dope. (laughs) Talk. Give. Make with the info. Look, lady, I keep telling you I'm only the bellhop around this joint. I don't know from nothing except you drag me back here and you're mopping up the manager's office with me. You know what I gotta know? What? The combo to that office safe over there in the corner. How do you know I got the combo? I know dumps like this old gran. You're on duty here alone tonight, so you know the combo. And you're gonna open it up. Even if I couldn't, even if I did, there ain't nothing in there worth your risking a chair wrap to get. That's where you're wrong. Dead wrong. If you don't open it up, you'll be just dead. Uh, how do you know there's something in there you want? You know I went up to see the lug that called himself John Smith. Yeah? Who are you, lady? Pocahontas? (laughs) Save the comedy. Quit clicking your choppers and quit stalling. Ain't gonna do you no good. If you don't let me answer them calls on a switchboard out there behind the desk, somebody's gonna wonder how come. It ain't gonna do you no good if they call the cops. Nobody in a dump like this calls the cops. Oh. I guess you've been around. I've been around and in and out. Yeah? What handpin? Never mind the jail. I've been a bouncer in a nightclub and I got what it takes to beat you to a pulp. Well, I'll take your word for it, sister. Doll's the name. Hi, doll. What's yours? The customers call me. What do you know, Joe? Okay, Joe. Now the way Emily posted, open that safe. Uh Uh-uh. Sorry, doll. No can do. 
Open that safe. You won't have no hand to open nothing else. Oh! <laughs> Some grip you got, pal. Yeah, Joe. Give her the combination of that box, you'll hear the bones crack any minute. No. It, it wouldn't do you no good if I could. How come not? The safe's got a time set on it. You can't open it before 7 in the morning. I got a notion you're lying. How come I'd lie? You think the management of this joint pays me enough to risk a, a broken hand or maybe a busted neck to keep you from taking everything that's in that there safe? Yeah. Maybe you're right, Joe. Maybe you ain't lying. Maybe we're gonna have to wait till 7 o'clock. What's in there you want so bad, though? You want to know, Joe? You give Smith a receipt for a package you put in the safe for him. He tell you that? No, Joe. He was kind of stubborn. Uh-huh. So what happened? I had to work over him. But he was still stubborn. Then what? I had him by the neck, Joe. Like this. Oh. Oh. He wouldn't tell me where he hid the 50 grand. Him and my boyfriend, another guy, got in a stick-up a couple of years ago. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, the south side payroll job where the guard was killed. I thought I recognized Smith as one of them. Yeah, Joe. The one that got off with a five and ten rap for talking to my boyfriend and his pal into the chair. So, what happened when you had him by the neck? I put on the pressure, Joe. Uh, hey! But still he wouldn't give out, Joe. Uh, he tried to break loose when all of a sudden his neck went... Joe! What do you know, Joe? I'm going to ease up, Joe. But don't answer that guy out in the lobby. Joe! Where are you, Joe? Don't answer, Joe. One yelp out of you, and I'll show you what I'd done to that dope upstairs. Joe! What do you know, Joe? Where are you? Steve... Steve, it's no use calling. There's something wrong here. That big blonde who killed Smith may have come back. Yes, Lorelei. And if she forced Smith to tell her, he'd put that envelope in the office safe. Poor Joe. Yeah. Steve, there's a light in the manager's office. You see that glass door over there behind the desk, back of the switchboard? Yes, and if what do you know Joe is in there, he isn't answering. For a very obvious reason. Yes, Lorelei, my lovely, for a reason so obvious I want you to get out of here. Why do you stay here and get your neck broken? Oh, no. You wouldn't want me to give that Amazonian strangler time to do an encore on Joe, would you? If it hasn't happened already. Well, no, but from what Joe said and what we've seen, Let Steve, me worry could... about that. Get out of here, Lorelei. Tell Harry to come in here, but softly. With his monkey wrench? Yes, but tell him not to rattle it unless he has to use it. While I... Get to the nearest phone and call Callahan of Homicide. On the double-double. <laughs> Look, Dolly, he's up on my Adam's apple. Shut up, Joe. Ain't a bad Joe as Joe's go. I don't have to smash your apple unless you make me. I don't think I could squawk if you told me I could. So don't try. And shut up. Got to be sure that guy that was calling for you has gone on his business. I ain't heard a thing in minutes. Guess he just wanted some room service. Or something. You better not come back and want it again. Yeah. So now what? So now we get down to cases. Tell me more about this time lock on the safe. Well, it's rigged to go off if anybody opens the safe before 7 in the morning. You wouldn't lie to me about that, would you, Joe? <laughs> no. Hey, doll, do we have to go through that choke act again? Maybe. Maybe not. What happens if you open the safe now? Plenty. Cops come? Sure. Okay. It's almost three now. I can wait till seven. We got a lot of night owls roosting in this joint. Suppose one of them wants something. They can go on wanting it. You and me are going to stay right here in the manager's office till seven. And then? That depends, Joe. Depends on what? Depends on if you've been lying to me or not. Uh-oh. Shut up, Joe. Joe? What do you know, Joe? It's the guy from before. Yeah. So what do I do? Ask him in. Oh. So you still got that gun? Yeah, Joe. You only got two hands. They ain't enough for two guys at once. <laughs> I wonder. Joe? Joe? Call him in. Like you've been sleeping and didn't hear him before. Yeah? Who is it? Steve Wilson, Joe. You okay? You've been sleeping. Yeah. Yeah, I'm okay. Uh, I've been sleeping. 
Come on in, Steve. Thanks. Well, who's your big blonde friend with the gun, Joe? Make the doll, Steve. Come here, Wilson. Sorry, Mr. Wilson, I couldn't warn you. I didn't need a warning, Joe. I've been standing outside listening. I knew what I was walking into. I thought you might like a little company. Who's this guy, Joe? Oh, just a friend of mine. Thanks for the cover, Joe, but I'm Steve Wilson of the Illustrated Press. Wilson the Racket Buster, pal of the cops? Yes, doll, and they'll be along in a very few minutes. What's bringing them? A little matter of a man called Smith. Dead as a doornail from a broken neck. Okay, boys. What have I got to lose? Open up that safe. The cops will have a real load for the meat wagon to the morgue. Thus, Steve has apparently and knowingly walked into a deadly situation to help his young friend, what do you know, Joe? In a moment, we'll come to the exciting climax of tonight's story... Back to Big Town, Steve Wilson, and the Deadly Doll. All right, boys. Open that safe. Or how'll you have your lid? You, uh, certainly picked big playmates. What do you know, Joe? I didn't pick her, Mr. Wilson. A doll just came in here and grabbed me and said, you're it. Hurry it up, boys. Just so there won't be no misunderstanding, I'll give you exactly a minute to quit stalling with the conversation and get that safe open. Thanks, doll. But even if you had what you want out of the safe right now... I doubt if you could get out of the hotel before one of my reporters gets back with the police. That took you ten seconds, Wilson. You ain't got but fifty left to get that safe open. She ain't kidding, Mr. Wilson. She darn near choked the wind out of me just before you come in. I know. I heard it, Joe. That's why I came in without waiting for Inspector Callahan. Now you only got forty seconds to waste. Can you open the safe, Joe? Yeah, sure, Mr. Wilson. But have you figured the angle that if the doll gets what she wants out of that safe... She's liable to knock us off with that gun anyway. Yes, Joe, that's a distinct possibility, but we haven't much choice. That leaves you about 30 seconds, boys. Go ahead and unlock the safe, Joe. I can't. Why not, Joe? Because it ain't locked. It ain't what? If you'd have looked close at the typewritten sign paste that right on a combination, you wouldn't have wasted all this time. Get out of the way. Let me see. Please don't blow open this safe. Just turn the handle and help yourself. Well, I'll be... Yeah. You see, the joint's been stuck up so often, the management got tired of having the safe fixed. Where till I get that envelope? I'll teach you not to lie to a lady, Joe. Okay, you guys. Stay put till I get the dough that really belonged to my boyfriend. Get set, Joe. Watch what gives, Mr. Wilson. The first one that moves gets it first. Hold it a sec, Mr. Wilson. Where's that envelope, Joe? Uh, uh, just pull out the big center drawer. It better be in here. What? Now, Mr. Wilson. Oh, go. I got a gun. I got her. Hold still, doll, baby. I wouldn't want to have to shoot no lady. You dead to double cross little trip. If I ever get out of this, I'll get you. You won't get out of this. How do you like my patented burglar alarm? Dean, Joe, what happened? What's going on here? This charming lady strangler didn't want to wait for Callahan, Lauren and I. Where is the inspector? He's on the way. What's all the kitchenware doing in the office safe, Joe? Is it that valuable? (laughs) No, Miss Cobin. That's my private burglar alarm system. It doesn't work. Yes, but where do you keep the guest valuables, Joe? Well, nobody trusts nobody in this hotel enough to leave anything valuable with anybody. Oh, what about that envelope the so-called John Smith left with you, Joe? Oh, oh, that. I I got it in the guy's letterbox behind the desk. Uh, Take this gun and watch the doll while I get it. Hmm, the doll... What a charming name. Shut your girlfriend up, Wilson. No gun on no gun, sir. So help Sit me Sit down up. and relax, doll. Or as Joe said, I'd hate to have to shoot a woman. Where's Harry the Hack, Lorna? Oh, I sent him to call Callahan and borrowed his monkey wrench. So, just let the doll start anything. Yeah, Mr. Wilson. I opened the envelope so she wouldn't be bothered by no newspaper ethics. Look at... Money. Fifty grand in hundreds. And a note. The payroll... What's the note say, Joe? Yeah, I didn't take time to read it. Uh, what does it say, Steve? If I should die, this is stolen dough. Hot money. So hot, it will burn someone to death. Steve. 
So ended with the restoration of the payroll money and the arrest, conviction, and subsequent execution of the deadly doll, another exciting adventure in the newspaper career of Steve Wilson and Lorelei of the Big Town Illustrated Press. Next week, bring you a hard-hitting story entitled, I Remember Murder. Another exciting assignment in the newspaper career of fighting Steve Wilson of Big Town. Don't miss it. In tonight's dramatization, all names, times, and places are fictional. But any similarity to other names and places is purely coincidental. Big Town features Edward Pauley as Steve Wilson, Fran Carlin as Lorelai Kilborn, and was written and produced by Jerry McGill. Now, Big Town bids you good night until next Tuesday night, same time, same station, when you'll hear the newsboy calling. Extra, extra hero about it. The story of Steve Wilson and I Remember Murder. Extra, extra. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.